My name's Steve Hodges. I don't actually have a fancy about me slide because I'm like Tony. I've never spoken at national like, you know, big conferences. So, that's, uh, that's all right. Uh, but uh, that was, it, was, uh, it was interesting. And you touched a little bit on tests. Um, I'm going to talk about, as it says, testing in Ruby gems. So uh, there's really two aspects to this. Uh, one is testing your gem, if you write a gem or contribute to a temp gem. And the other is including gems in your project, whether it's a web application or just Ruby script or whatever. And I'm standing right in front of the screen for like all you guys right there. So I might, oh, good. I don't know how this is gonna work, but. Um, so for gem authors, as Tony demonstrated, uh, we can really easily run our tests. So if I go over to, can run uh, RSpec and there's my test for my gem, right? So um, <clears throat> we're done. We, we tested our gem. It's good. I have a bunch of testing, you know, passing tests. They're all green. I have like 106 examples, which isn't bad. Um, but uh, the problem is testing your gem isn't exactly like testing a web application because, well, if we go up to uh, onto Ruby Gems and check this gem out, you will see that I say that it's available for uh, Rails 4.2 to Rails 6, well, 5.2. And um, when we run our spec or we use Bundler, which Tony explained, uh, we are just running it against one specific version of Rails. So if we were to look at my gem file uh, that I was currently testing against, we'd see that this was uh, 5.2.1 uh, actually, but still 5.2. So we did not test our gem in 5.1 or 5.0 or 4.2. And if I push this gem up, there's a pretty good chance that I just pose those people because this gem does work with active record. And as Tony mentioned, you have to do special stuff for different versions of Rails. Um, so uh, there's a, a few solutions for this. Um, one is a gem that I've been using for a little while. Um, I don't use uh, Travis CI. Travis CI uh, can um, actually do this as well. I'll show that in a minute. But um, in my uh, project, I use the appraisal gem. And it's published by ThoughtBot, who is pretty well respected, I think, in the community. And it, you can see on the right that I have an appraisals file that sits in the root of my uh, gem. And as you can see, I can define different sets of gems that I want to test my gem against. Um, so in this case, uh, I'm specifying, you know, Rails 4.2. Uh, and then this, this particular gem uh, does test different ORMs. So I'm testing against SQLite, MySQL, and Postgres. Um, so when I switch over, when I run my tests, before I actually uh, publish my gem, um, I will run appraisal RSpec, which looks like this, which then will go through and it's running the test for each of those gem sets that I configured. And there were some deprecation errors. That's active support's problem, not mine. Um, but um, <clears throat> so this takes a little longer, right? There's 12 different permutations of the gems that I'm testing. But at least once it's done, I'll know that it works in all the versions that I say I support. So that's fun. Uh, my original test suite ran in about you know, a second or something like that, and this will take more like 30 seconds. So when I'm working on my gem, I'm doing TDD or whatever, I'm not running this. Obviously, I'm running it on the current version of you know, like 5.2, Rails 5.2. Um, but it's done, and they all passed. So uh, it being. Um, so if, uh, if you're using Travis CI, uh, this is how you might con configure your Travis.yaml file. This is from their documentation. And you can see in there that there are a list of gem files. Um, that's basically what I was doing in appraisal. But this is cool. It lets you test against different Ruby versions as well. So you can make sure that it works in different Ruby versions. Um, Travis CI does have a free option for open source projects. So um, but I kind of doubt this feature is included in that, but you know, check it out. Um, but what happens when Travis would run your specs is it basically creates a matrix of all these, it ends up with like 54 different permutations and then it runs them all in parallel. So then you know that your project works on all these. <clears throat> so that's a little bit about, uh, a 
about uh, testing your gem. Uh, again, you know, your tests, you know, as Tony mentioned, you're really including a module, and then that's the front door to your gem. And then you're testing that, just like you would test any other module or class or whatever that you have in any project. So authors test your gems. Um, so on the flip side, when we are consuming gems and we're using them in our projects, um, what kind of things do we need to consider? So um, one of the things that uh, you should really look at are what are the QA practices of the gem author or the contributors? Um, how are they testing this gem? So, you know, if you are working in, you know, this is your day job, you work for a company where the, the, the software that you're working on is mission critical, um, you really can't just include a gem and just hope it works. Um, so, you know, how do they do QA? Um, did they test against your dependencies? Did they test against your version of Rails? Or in my case, which, you know, database ORM? Um, did, you know, if you upgrade a gem in your project, uh, did that gem introduce a bug? Or maybe does the functionality that uh, you use in that gem, does it still work? Or does it still work the same way? Uh, and, uh, are you afraid to upgrade maybe because you have like paralysis? Like, I can't upgrade to the next version of Rails because, or you know, from 5.1 to 5.2 because I'm afraid of what's gonna happen. So um, over time, I've come to the conclusion that the solution to almost all these things is integration tests. Um, and uh, you do you know, run into people or see advice where people say, only test the code that you wrote that's in your repo. Um, and I don't think that's very good advice, and I hope that they're not actually professional developers, but um, I, I'll show you what, we're, what I'm doing here. So we have a sample controller test code. This is our spec. so if you're not familiar with our spec, the is expected to stuff up here, just assume that that is calling a controller action. So we are hitting some route, and in these particular tests, um, it's pretty self-explanatory, I think, but when someone's logged out, we want it to be uh, unauthorized. When an admin user is logged in, we want it to succeed. We want the person to be able to view the page. And when they are unauthorized, um, they get a 403, they get a forbidden. So um, if you are using a gem for authentication or for authorization, you are integration testing right here with those gems. You are testing to make sure that you are using device right. <clears throat> it's very easy not to use it right, trust me. And, um, or you know, if you're using CanCan -can or something for uh, authorization, again, are you using it right? So we're testing our configuration, but we're also testing to make sure the gem is working. Um, in a little bit different example, um, at work, uh, we do financial transfers bank or transfers of money from one uh, bank account to the other. So when uh, we deal with investments, so when an investment is completed, we want to send money from the investor to a business. And that code might look something like this at the top. Um, the API that we use is called Dwala, and it's a bank um, actually, and they have an API, which is one of the reasons we use them, and they also provide us a Ruby gem. So it's not this simple. Uh, trust me, my production code does not look like this and it's not that easy to transfer money. But uh, this gives you an idea of what we're talking about here. So the first uh, up there, our code is Dwala API.transfer. We pass in a couple bank account numbers and an amount. And then in our test down here at the bottom, this is just a unit test. We are testing to make sure that the Dwala, the Dwala API received a method call called transfer with these arguments. It's just a unit test, don't worry. Um, so if we upgrade the Dwala gem, uh, it's possible that they merge in a pull request or they add some feature that I don't really want, um, but uh, that changes things, that changes how my application uses the gem. So if I have these two possible uh, changes, the top and bottom, they wouldn't be committed at the same time. Uh, let's say we have the top one and the bottom one, audience participation time, if you paid any attention, would my test still pass from the previous slide? Yes. So, okay, someone other than Tony, come on. <laughs> yes, they still pass. 
Why do they still pass, Tony? You might as well. Go ahead. Because you are testing that a method is a, a certain method is called in the class and effectively stubbing it out because our spec stubs out actual method calls by default. That's right. So even if wallet.transfer doesn't exist anymore, our spec does not care that it doesn't exist. It just says, yeah, you called transfer on, on, on that, that class. Or, uh, so um, your test still pass. So what happens uh, in the second case? It passes. And what are the uh, ramifications of this change? What, what changes in my application? I'm sending money the wrong way. <laughs> they changed the interface. Now, I, God, I hope this wouldn't happen, but they changed, they swapped the destination and source. So all of a sudden we're changing money, sending money the wrong way. And if you are working a regulated industry like we do, this is, this ends up, this is bad. This is like the worst thing we can do is send money the wrong way. This is like Nigerian prints bad. Uh, so uh, needless to say, you know, these are, I don't think these things would happen, but they could. And interfaces and gems uh, change, uh, functionality changes. So I don't necessarily, I can't get away with just testing the interface that I've done here at the bottom. I can't just test that we called transfer on wallet API. We need integration tests. So if I'm gonna integration test an API, I actually wanna test that we're sending the right stuff to the API. So if I go out and I look at wallet's API docs, they say, this is what an HD, uh, what, uh, this is how you transfer money. You, uh, we have the headers up here, this is the content of the post, the body, and then this is the response. So it really wants to see this. So somewhere in that gem, it's actually doing this work. So I'm gonna test that instead. So uh, I dig into the gem, up there is my uh, previous test, these are my new tests, and you can see that the gem is uh, using Faraday, which I trust, uh, to create an HTTP post to a URL with this payload, and I can test that. And if you compare the two tests, here I'm actually testing that the source and destination are correct, that the currency is right, and everything else. So in this process, I'm fully integration testing the Dwala gem is the features that I use and care about, and they can change whatever they want in that gem, and I can upgrade, and if my tests break, I know I've got to fix stuff. And if they don't break, I can assume we're cool. So um, a lot of the kind of problems that you live with as, you know, when you install gems, you upgrade gems, you live with an app over time, um, you can solve by just changing the boundary of where you're testing. Um, also, a lot of APIs do give you a, uh, provide a, a test API that you can use for integration tests. So you can actually get a real API and get real responses back from it. And then you don't have to test the gem, in my opinion, at all. And you can just hit the API and make sure it's doing what you want it to do. And that is kind of the best solution. There. Um, actually, one reason that I mentioned testing the dollar value, this is $50,000. Does anyone here use Stripe? The Stripe use dollars? They use cents, that's right. So um, if I had code somewhere that was accidentally converting that to cents, I'd have a real problem on my hand. Well, the transfer would probably fail, probably. But it would be 100 times that amount, so. Um, so uh, I kind of you know, covered a little bit about testing multiple versions for uh, if you're a gem author or contributor, um, and then on the if you are a consumer of gems and you use them in your projects, I strongly recommend integration tests. They help you um, ensure you can upgrade. They make sure the functionality that you rely on in the gem still works. You can find bugs in the gems. I found a lot of bugs in gems. I've fixed some and I've worked with some of my vendors on others to fix because their gems are not um, available publicly. And uh, you can be a lot more confident in that your application that doesn't have defects. Any questions out there? Yes? Um, so you showed how, as a gym monitor, you could test your gym across multiple versions of spare gyms. Uh, is there a way to like, just define a range so that you don't have to, because like, you were doing like Rails, X, and yeah. high school, Y, right? Like, 
it's their way to define a brand you know, so that you don't have to like, type in a test case for every permutation of every combination. Uh, uh, well, you think it'd be a good cloud. Right. Um, not that I'm aware of, although most of the appraisal scripts that are files that I've seen, again, it's just Ruby, um, you'll generate it programmatically. Um, so I actually, um, the appraisal file I showed isn't what I use. I actually generate a matrix myself and generate those. Um, in the end, what it's doing is the same thing that the Travis gem is doing uh, and creating a bunch of gem files um, and, uh, and then installing all of those gems in your system. So it, it doesn't, I'm aware of, uh, and I haven't seen that in Travis either. Um, have you had to work with any strategies where, like, I, I agree where you kind of, you need to kind of still test your, your perimeter of how you use the application and it's actual, like, in a real world situation, like, uh, like maybe in like an S3 upload is mm -hmm. part of an integration test. But when you're kind of at a unit level, kind of almost completely stubbing that out in a few cases because, like, you, you don't want your test to be those speed lines. By hitting up an API a hundred times in a row, that's right. And you might not even have an internet connection. So, have you kind of had like any strategies to kind of like do this over here, but then still kind of properly mock out your objects? Yeah, I mean, I think what I showed is clearly an integration test territory. Um, and, you know, if you're testing APIs, you don't, if you're testing against actual APIs, you really don't have a choice if you don't have internet. In fact, that's how I found out I was hitting an API on my test because the internet went out. So, um, but I would agree. I mean, your unit tests should be testing boundaries and, and generally, and then integration should be uh, fully exercising your app code and the gems. Another over here? Yeah. Uh, not, not so much question, just comment. Um, Travis is, is pretty cool, and there is a, a not officially supported kind of tool called what would Travis do, WWTD, <laughs> which will actually, it's not a perfect emulation, it's not officially supported by Travis, but it's pretty close. And if you if you run it, it will attempt to mimic Travis, and it actually does a pretty good job. Um, so um, for people who are interested in that kind of thing, you can actually uh, mimic Travis well. Um, Circle CI is another one. They do, they do a, uh, support the uh, local build. You don't have to actually push to their system and force them to test. You can actually use their local uh, client. I actually use Circle CI, and I actually push my appraisal up there and I execute my test that way. But hang on, there's a lot of options. So good, good, good thing. Have you seen any benefit of trying to run them in parallel locally? If you just push to CI, let it handle it. I mean, that's what I tend to do, is just push the CI. I don't know, I, I, guess, I assume you can parallelize them if uh, you're using the Travis CLI and all that kind of stuff. Do you, are you aware of what well, I'm saying? Like the Hydrogen or Parallel Test, or there's some of those that essentially I'm going to execute command line. Right. Just split it apart. But right. I don't, but then, I mean, so my, yeah. my test suite for work has 5,500 examples and runs in three minutes, so I don't really feel the need to parallelize it, but I haven't gotten to that point. Other people may be in a different position, so, Mitch? Um, back to Judy's question a little bit about unit tests, integration tests. Do you run your tests in tiers, where you do like unit test suite and then integration test suite and something even higher, or is it? No, I don't. I just think it sounds like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else in the talk I do, but that, I, I, I should look into that at some point. But I mean, of course, if you're, if you're, uh, you know, you're working in a specific library, you know, and you're using, um, you, you can, you're certainly running the test for that as you're developing. So, you know, you kind of consider that an example. Any other questions? All right, uh, I don't have a fancy about me slide. Uh, like I said at the end either, but uh, you can refer to Tony Drake's uh, if you'd like. Oh, I'm available in Slack too. I can got in any hacker Slack, so feel free to uh, reach out to me. I'd love to chat. That's what I got. Awesome.